PCN is brought to you in part by the following underwriters. Welcome to another new episode of PAC-TV Community News. We're so happy to be here. We have a great show this week, and we take you to the Pilgrim Hall Museum's 193rd Birthday Bash, Duxbury Beach's Labor Day Beach Party, and Trifletti and Costa's 40th Business Anniversary Get Together. PCN gets a tour of the newly completed restoration project in Manomet, the Symes House, and we meet a legendary jazz guitarist who visited the Pembroke Library. We stop into Kingston Collection, which has another new business opening up, Abilities Rec, which has a unique business model to share with the community. Mike Gamaris of Remax Spectrum is on the set with more real estate information. It's a full show, and we begin on Duxbury Beach. The Duxbury Activities Committee is back with their beach party event after five years. This year it was held on Labor Day weekend. PCN stopped in to check out the action. This is actually the, uh, the first Labor Day Duxbury Beach Party. We uh, had to lay off it for about five years. Birds, plovers, regulations said we couldn't do it. So we had to decide how to do it best. And what we decided was, if we did a Labor Day party, it would give us bookends in the summertime. So we have the parade to start at the beginning of the year for summertime. And then we go all the way to Labor Day now and we have this beach party. What works out best for everybody is the fact that it's kind of like everybody like starts the Duxbury summer season and now we end it. Uh, back when we did it on July 4th weekend, we used to have an option of one or the other weekends based on the tide. Now having to do it on July 4th, just the parade, we now work with the uh, Labor Day factor and it makes it a lot easier for us to do what we have to do because if you look around right now, we have families and uh, it's a great situation. I know we never knew how many people were going to come today, but we're looking at two, 3,000 people probably and it worked out so well. And so we can give back to the community something that we lost for five years. That's great for everybody. So we're all gathered to just have a bonfire and get together. And we all used to do this a lot. And it kind of stopped for a little while. And we're all really excited to start it again. Um, so we're back together. My favorite part is just because I have a six-year-old, all the kids getting together. So it's really great for all of our friends to get together and the kids to get together as a community and the kids hang out and then the parents get to hang out and then everyone just gets to see the Waves play, which are such a great band, and everyone gets to see them play. And then the community gets to talk and hang out and see your neighbors um, and then just get to enjoy the beach as well because it's almost over. So summer's almost closing. Let's move the party to Labor Day. It's a great weekend to do things anyway. So we have a great band lineup. We have the Waves playing with us. We have this wonderful 300 pallets back there ready to, to light up as a bonfire and the town loves it every year. We enjoy doing it. Just look around. Look at the kids having so much fun. Like I said, we've been doing this for, I've been doing this over 20 years and uh, we have a great team, great committee and all we're doing is for the town. To have, make sure people have a great time, make sure people are safe and just enjoy this beautiful ocean out here. I mean, what could be better? My favorite part, obviously, like everyone else, it's the bonfire going up. When that thing, gets, when that thing torches, it's a wonderful thing. And we actually, uh, we actually allow some of the kids to come up and actually, uh, well, older kids. I mean, we, we supervise them. The fire department's really good about that. They keep, take care of it. We actually allow them to go up and light the fire. That's really exciting, especially for the kids that get to do it. So. Um, I think the committee are just some marvelous people. And then we have some people that have been with myself and, and others uh, that have uh, co-chaired or chaired the meeting committee it's been a great couple of years meaning 20 or 20 plus um, and so uh, we all that's we enjoy it and we do it for the people in town Plymouth is full of incredible historical sites and museums but one said museum isn't just a museum it's a historical site as well 
Pilgrim Hall Museum is one of the oldest continually run museums in the country, and the dedicated staff are always working on compelling exhibits to keep audiences engaged. PCN stopped into their 193rd birthday bash for a little cake and conversation about what's on the horizon. So today, September 1st, is Pilgrim Hall Museum's 193rd birthday. We are the oldest continuously operated museum in the country. Because it is our birthday, we are offering free admission to all patrons. We're always free for Plymouth residents, but today we're free to everyone, and we also are serving birthday cake from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. to celebrate. So we believe that this museum is really important, not only to local Plymouth residents, but to the nation as a whole. The Pilgrim story has been so ingrained into our foundation narrative as Americans that we really here try and tell that story in a different way and tell that story, tell things about it that maybe people don't know. We're trying to get a more multi multicultural and diversity aspects into the story. Visitors coming to this museum can really enjoy the vast array of objects and the different types of objects that we display. We have our entire main hall is dedicated to paintings and representations of the pilgrims. Some of them are monumental in size, about 16 feet in length. But we also have original objects that came over on the Mayflower, or original tools of the native peoples that they made 10,000 years before the pilgrims even came to this area. So what's really special is just the diverse array that people can really learn from this museum. Right now, our newest temporary exhibit is on wedding dress fashions. It's called Weddings 396. It celebrates 396 years of wedding dress fashions from recreation costumes of the what we believe could have been worn at the first wedding in Plymouth Colony in 1621 all the way up to modern day. And our next temporary exhibit is going to be on the first peoples of New England and Native American culture pre-contact and into today. I think Pilgrim Hall Museum is a really important place for everyone to come and visit to really learn about the true Plymouth story, not just the Pilgrim story. There are a lot of misconceptions associated with the Pilgrim story from the first Thanksgiving to the landing on the rock. And I think our museum does a really great job of trying to dispel some of these myths and really get to the truth of what happened. Kevin and Jamie Souza have had a dream of opening Abilities Rec, which works with children and adults with special needs as an opportunity for them to have fun and provide a safe space for them. PCN stopped in to watch their dream come to life. Right now, um, we are in the process of getting Abilities Rec uh, set up. Um, it's, Abilities Rec is an inclusive fitness center um, that is for children and adults of all ages, all abilities. But we're looking to work with children specifically with autism and special needs um, as, an, as an outlet and opportunity for um, kids and adults to come and have fun, take part in classes um, that they normally wouldn't be able to take part in other places and just to provide a venue or an outlet um, that currently doesn't exist in the marketplace today. Drums Alive Ability Beats which is a scientifically researched program out of Germany um, which is whole body whole mind workout where you drum on stability balls to music and there's choreography to each songs and it's an activity that can be adapted to all levels. It will be a very uh, stress-free environment for parents that they won't need to worry if, that, if their child has a meltdown or um, a situation they won't need to feel worried or embarrassed of what other parents might be thinking, that this will truly be a stress-free environment that kids, adults of all ages can come, have fun, and not worry about anything and they can just be who they are. So personally for me this has been a dream of 14 plus years of opening up a center for individuals with autism and other special needs to have a safe place and an outlet for them to come and experience opportunities that they don't get anywhere else. Um, again it's been a long time coming and so I'm so excited to finally have the opportunity to do this. I'm very much looking forward to the opening of Abilities Rec because of the sensory room mainly 
um, getting regular sensory-based activity, um, the vestibular, proprioceptive, and kinesthetic uh, sensory input through activity and certain types of activity um, on a regular basis helps me to function better, both with my um, self-care and my independent living skills. I find that my um, executive functioning improves quite a bit with regular sensory activity. This is an opportunity for me to spend time with my family. Um, I left my job of over 20 plus years with Stop and Shop to pursue this, to make this happen. It's been a lifelong dream of my wife's. And working in retail isn't exactly family conducive, so this presents the opportunity to spend time with my wife, my kids, and to really build something that could be meaningful, impactful to our community, as well as afford me the opportunity to, to be with my family more. As the calendars changed over to the month of September, the Pembroke Public Library turned their events calendar over as well, and they did it in style. Thanks to support from the Friends of the Pembroke Public Library, they hosted an evening with jazz and blues guitarist Paul Spidell. The sweet sounds of blues and jazz guitar might not be what you typically expect to hear within the confines of a public library. But with the fall season rolling in, the Friends of the Pembroke Public Library want to start things off on the right foot by bringing in nationally recognized jazz and blues guitarist Paul Spidell to host a not-so-typical information session involving the history of jazz with blues roots. I'll be playing solo jazz guitar and I'll be interspersing some history and some, uh, a little bit of the background of some of the pieces, some of the performers who made the songs what they were. Um, well, depending on the audience, we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, some musical theory aspects, maybe kind of see if there's some musicians in the audience, uh, maybe go to the 200 level. Uh, but it'll be a lot of fun. We'll be playing some live music and um, I think everyone will have a great time. For all intents and purposes, this was a free concert in an intimate setting with a gifted performer. But as we mentioned, it was also an information session. So for those who may not know how and why blues and jazz converge on the musical path, Spinell was there to explain before and after each piece that he played. It'll be uh, blues music, basically. But uh, what a lot of people don't realize is jazz is blues. The music got more developed as time went along. People started playing more chords. Um, but if you really get down to the roots of it, it's all blues, just like rock and roll has a blues basis. So we're going to kind of unpack that a little bit and uh, kind of liven it up here. So it'll be a lot of fun. Spidell may be more accustomed to playing to larger rooms when he's out touring clubs in and around Boston, but he's also an instructor. So teaching a class or demonstrating for a group while giving in-depth explanations is second nature for him. And judging by the lack of control that folks had over their feet, it's safe to say that he was playing to a captive audience. This is the first time I've played in Pembroke proper, uh, but there's a lot of great music lovers in the South Shore. Uh, I've played Weymouth, Quincy, a lot of other places down this part of the area, along down to um, the Marshfield Fair. We played that last year actually with my band. Uh, a lot of great musicians and great music lovers in this area, so I think we'll have a very well-informed audience and a lot of people who really want to hear some good music. I was lucky enough to hear Mr. Spidell warming up before his performance tonight, and there was something about the jazz music he was playing that just sounded, I don't know, intellectual. So I thought the library was just the right setting for it. Of course, it picked up as the night went along, but if this is a sign of things to come for the fall here at Pembroke Public Library, we are in for a very enjoyable season. Reporting from Pembroke, I'm Brian Sullivan for PCN. <laughs> After several years of renovations, the Joseph A. Symes House in Manomet is just about ready for occupancy. Thanks in part to funding from the Community Preservation Act, this three-floored mansion, which is over 150 years old, will provide living, office, and community space. We spoke with the president of the company with the grand designs on the future of this impressive property. This is the Joseph A. Symes House. It was built in 1863, or around that period. It's an example of uh, Victorian Italianate architecture. It's a pretty unique house. There aren't very many of them left um, in southeastern Massachusetts. 
Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why town meeting decided it was worthy of uh, renovation and protecting. In 2012, when they first started the renovation, the yard was uh, pretty much a shambles. And they've reinforced the part of the lawn. It, it looks like lawn, but they've reinforced it out by Manomet Point Road so we can actually use it for parking. So we have parking for about 20 vehicles here on site in addition to the 11 vehicle spaces in the parking lot out back. Phase two of the renovation was to really do the interior. And what they did uh, on the third floor was they, they really stripped the, the building down to its bare skeleton um, and built two affordable units up on the third floor. They're actually pretty nice units. Everybody I've taken through there would like to live there. It's really a multi-use building or multi-function building. On the second floor, there are four business suites that we'll be leasing out to you know, CPAs, lawyers, you know, small operations like that. And uh, down here on the first floor, these are all public use facilities um, for government meetings, for nonprofit groups to meet, for people to have functions and events. There are uh, a couple of um, unusual um, items in the house. Uh, one, I, I think, and I tell everybody I take through a tour on this, is that um, this house has one of the most picturesque closets in Plymouth. It's the center window here on the house, looking out from the front of the house, and it's embedded in one of the closets. So it's a really impressive site. It'd be a great place for somebody to set up a desk if they're a writer or something like that. While the roof is not going to be available for tenants or anybody to uh, go up to the top of, from the roof of this house, you can actually see P-Town on a, on a nice clear day. Where the porch curves, the, the, the actual flooring is flared. So each one of the floorboards was flared individually to make this curve, and it's a really impressive sight. We probably had over 100 people come through on our open house, um, and um, almost everybody that I toured around the building, um, they just thought the building was so impressively done. Um, they felt it was well worth the investment the town made in it. Um, and they're, they're, they seem to be pretty excited about some of the things that we have planned here at the Symes House. Steve Trifletti of Plymouth has a lot to celebrate these days. 40 years in business at Trifletti and Costa Law Firm, 25 years as Plymouth's town moderator, and a recent survivor of a brain aneurysm. September is Brain Aneurysm Awareness Month, and in the U.S. alone, one in 50 people have a brain aneurysm. That's 30,000 ruptures each year, half of which result in death. The condition can run in families, with women more likely to develop one than men. Steve held a big event at Tavern on the Wharf to celebrate all his good fortune, and PCN was invited along to bring you the story. Many of you know, an organization is only as good as the people who are in it. And I would like to thank and have recognized our wonderful staff at Tripletti and Costa. Right over here, thank you. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts State Senate official citation, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to Tripletti and Costa in recognition of your outstanding and dedicated service to the greater Plymouth area for over 40 years of legal practice. And be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success. And this citation be duly signed by the President of uh, the Senate and attested to a copy therefore transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. When I first started this, I didn't have to have glasses, but the, 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 some lawyer wrote this in a couple whereas's and we're all set. Uh, and whereas these two are great people and whereas we appreciate, no, just um, signed by the president, Stan Rosenberg, attested by William F. Welch and offered by your very proud state senator and friend, Vinnie DiMasino. God bless you guys. <laughs> I was in a car accident, I was rear-ended, went to the hospital, had an MRI, and I was told that I have a brain aneurysm. And so I saw a neurosurgeon at the end of July, I had surgery, I now have a titanium stent in the back of my head, I'm happy to report that it's remodeling and shrinking the aneurysm, it's scheduled to be go away at some point. I feel great, 
happy to be here, happy to be celebrating uh, with everybody else. We have a lot to be happy about. So in meeting Steve, it's not a surprise. He knows so many people. He's working his connections. I mean, he's just really making a big burst of activity and energy, especially in this local community. So for me, he's been amazing because a lot of people, especially higher profile people, just aren't that willing to jump right out there and say, this is what's happened to me. But it's a blessing for the cause because he's already making an impact to making it saving lives. September is Brain Aneurysm Month, and we're having an event at the State House on September 25th at 11 a.m. at the Grand Staircase. Um, Senator Vinny DiMacito has been very supportive. The governor will be present. Uh, Representative Matt Muratori has been supportive as well. And we're looking to raise awareness with the legislators that night. The Zakem Brinch will be lit along with some other buildings throughout the state of Massachusetts. And looking forward to the spring, we'll be going to Washington also to be meeting with various congressional officials. And the Brain Aneurysm Foundation started here in Boston, Massachusetts about 23 years ago and it has grown tremendously. The mission first supported as providing support in basic education. We've grown into a national or organization providing education, support, awareness, advocacy and research funding. So what's important is early detection. You can have a scan, you can find out you have a brain aneurysm and get it treated. So that's what I want to highlight here during Awareness Month, is really know the facts, share the facts, and save a life. We are very pleased to welcome back Mike Gamaris from Remax Spectrum here in Plymouth and beyond um, to talk about real estate matters and home matters. Uh, last time you were here, it was before uh, the summer really got moving. Now mm -hmm. the summer's over. How was the real estate market, both for buyers and sellers, during this past summer? It was a steady uh, summer for, for real estate all the way around. Um, sellers continued to see price, uh, prices go up, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because of the inventory never really stabilized. Uh, we saw very small influxes of listings, never to the point we expected, mm -hmm. dating all the way back to spring. Um, so sellers were happy to see the prices increase. Um, buyers still have low interest rates, which mm -hmm. is good, so they're uh, good, good buying power. Problem is they just can't find what they're looking for still. Um, right. So we have a lot of buyers on the sidelines waiting for the right homes to come on the market. Right. And what what could possibly drive more houses to come on the market? I think uh, the the major issue we have is that sellers are, are waiting for their next home. Uh, they yeah. don't see the home they're going to move to, whether it be downsizing or upsizing. Mm -hmm. And because they don't see the house that they really have fallen in love with, yep. they're not comfortable putting their house on the market yet. Yep. And the unfortunate part is that creates a really bad domino effect downstream to all the price points. Um, right. So that's what causes is low inventory prices to continue to escalate right. and buyers to get frustrated not finding something. Yeah, and the houses are still f selling very rapidly. They are. So houses that come on the market that are priced properly mm -hmm. are going very quickly. Um, they are seeing um, price bidding wars. Yes. You know, we're seeing uh, buyers remove contingencies and, mm -hmm. and move in without inspections even. Wow. Um, so the, it, it is very strong for oh, sellers scary. in that. Yeah, it is yeah. very scary. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, when, you, when you have multiple buyers coming in and bidding on a home, it's amazing what they'll start to remove from their offer just to make it happen if they've really love the home. Yeah, wow. Okay. Let's talk about some misconceptions about selling your home. Um, I have to find my next home first, right? That's the first thing. It is. So w why is that a misconception? Well, you know, I think uh, sellers think like once they put their house in the market and they found the buyer, it's gone under agreement, they need to be ready to move quickly, mm -hmm. uh, 45, 60 days, mm -hmm. whatever the buyer wants. And that's really not the case. There are many ways that the, the sellers can be protected so that they can have their house on the market have a contingency that says, if I find a buyer for my home, I need time to find my next home. Okay. And it just needs to be worded properly in their listing to make sure buyers that come in are aware of that. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is you just never know what, what buyer's coming in to purchase your home as a seller. And, and their situation may be very flexible. They may be renting right. and yep. they have more time. And, yep. they, and because they love the home, they're willing to give you three, mm -hmm. four months. And I think that if, uh, if sellers got there and, and were educated on that, uh, they'd be a lot more comfortable getting on the market. And then, and then that will help open up the, the inventory. In, across right. the board. Now, if somebody really wants a house and 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 the the seller agrees, yeah, you know, this is a great price, but the seller just can't find a place. Have you ever seen it where the buyer will actually pay for housing? 
Temporary housing for the seller? Yeah, uh, we haven't had uh, to that extent. Yeah, only a few times where, where um, uh, buyers will be a little bit more flexible on helping share expenses if they yeah, need to right, get, get right. some interim housing. That comes into play uh, sometimes when the sellers have found new construction and there's a <gasps> delay. Right. Um, and But there are definitely situations where uh, the buyers will close mm -hmm. on the home mm -hmm. and then let the sellers rent back for yes. a period of time. Yep. Yep. And, and that works too, depending on uh, their situation. Right, so everything's negotiable. It, absolutely, and, and there's so many buyers out there that have flexible situations that it, it can be done. Okay. Another misconception, people think they're putting their house on the market. I don't need to declutter my home. Yeah. People know I live here. My wife cracks up all the time because I, I look at my my house and, and how things are and I don't see a mess, you know, where, yeah. I've, where I've left a room. Uh, you know, we all see our homes differently. Yeah. Uh, we live there every day, so yeah. we think that's just the norm. And what we try to educate our clients on is just take a step back the buyers that come in, you want them to envision themselves there, right. their furniture, um, you know, how they want to live and yeah. how they would set up rooms. And sometimes, you know, I think sellers uh, get concerned they're going to spend a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, preparing a home for sale. But most of the time, it's just time, right. you know, removing items, um, reorganizing, rearranging, right. uh, rather than spending a lot of money on, on right. uh, maintenance items. So this is called basically staging your house, it right? It is. Yeah. Right. You want to put your home in the best light. Sometimes even outside, just fresh mulch. Right. Yeah, uh, will work. You know, we Curb weed appeal. It, weed, the, yeah. weed the mulch beds and put some new mulch. Those down. weeds that are coming out of your gutter, those should come out. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it amazes me sometimes when I see a house on the market and I think this would cost like a hundred dollars to fix this, yeah. and it would look so much different. Yeah, hundred dollars, but but five hours worth of work. Exactly. And not willing exactly. To put the time in. Exactly. Um, I want to have uh, room to negotiate, so let's start higher. Always right. <laughs> Yeah, I think the, the uh, toughest part for any seller is accepting what the sales price should be. Yep. So you do all the research, you determine what's on the market and what the market calls for. And then uh, the mentality is, well, buyers are going to come in and try to lowball me. Mm -hmm. So let's start 10, 20,000 higher so we can negotiate. Yeah. What you've really done is priced yourself out of the market. Right. All the buyers that may have looked at it at four ninety nine nine are not going to look at it at five nineteen nine, and now you missed out an opportunity to yeah. get full price. Right. Um, and so I think sellers just need to know you, you set a price that you're comfortable with, yeah. that's fair, mm -hmm. uh, then, then you'll find the buyer for it. And your realtor will tell you if you're not being realistic. Yeah, A absolutely. reputable realtor will say absolutely. you're yeah. not going to sell it. The numbers, yeah. uh, the good thing about the real estate market is the, the numbers bear out uh, yep. what the house really is valued for. Right, So exactly. you just need to accept it and, yep. and move. <laughs> Accept what it is. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to sell. Let's get it on the market immediately. Right. What's wrong with that? Well, you know, I think uh, people always talk about we're getting ready to sell. We're going to be selling our home next year, and then that next year comes up pretty quickly, mm -hmm. and they're weeks away, and, and they were planning to relocate, and now they have to go. Uh, so uh, you, you really shouldn't rush to market. Mm -hmm. um, the decluttering and the prep takes some time. Yeah. You want to uh, prepare your house for sale. You want it to, to do a coming soon period if you have a realtor that you're going to be listing with. Now, talk about that. What is that? Well, there's... there's um, it's new. It, it is. Yeah. The, um, the issue in the market is when homes came on that were priced properly, they were selling so fast that buyers felt like they didn't get a good look at the home. Okay. You know, it sold yep. in the first day on the market. Fair, yeah. So um, there's a way to do a, a coming soon listing where you might have a week to 10 days or two weeks of a period where the, the house is marketed. Mm -hmm. And that way, everyone knows the date is going to be live. Yep. Everyone can schedule showing in the first few days, yep. and everyone gets an opportunity to look at the home. So no one's supposed to go into that home before that date? Absolutely not. The oh, realtor okay. cannot show that property before it goes live. The great thing for the seller is now you've organized as many viewings as possible when it goes live, exactly. and you're going to get the highest price possible. Exactly. So why wouldn't every realtor do this? I think there's a lot of misconceptions about the coming soon process, yeah. um, and because there are some folks out there that let people get sneak peek, uh, that it's viewed as a negative thing, when it, really in the end it's a very po a positive thing for everybody, both buyers and sellers. Of course it is. Now, do they still have brokers open houses before they other do. people can go in? Yeah, some agents do that. Um, what we're seeing a trend now for open houses is uh, during the week yep. after work, 4 to 6 p.m. seems mm -hmm. to be a hot time for mm -hmm. open houses. People are coming home from work, picking up the kids, and they want to view a house. Yep. Um, so that's a, a great way to, to get more uh, traffic through a home before it goes live. Okay, great. And in our last minute, um, that was our first offer, but we'll get better ones. Yeah. <laughs> You know, some, the, the, the toughest part is a uh, house goes on the market. The first couple of days you get one of those offers that's maybe five or 10000 below asking, and sellers start to think, we're going to wait it out. Yeah. We got an offer that quick. There'll be more. And, and really, uh, history tells us the first offer is generally the best. Yeah. And, and anything after that, as more time goes, then people start to think something's wrong with the property. Right. Don't get greedy. Right. Don't get greedy. Right, right. Yeah. So go with a reputable deal, uh, realtor who, who's Absolutely. been around, who knows what they're doing. Um, 
be realistic about what yep. you're going to get and the time frame it's going to take to sell it Absolutely. and where you're going to move. Exactly. And, and realize that almost everything is negotiable. Absolutely. Have okay. a plan. Have a plan and work the plan. Work the plan. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank this was you. great. We'll have you back in a couple months and see how October, November is going in the, in the real estate Looking market. Looking forward to it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And thank you for watching. You can check out PCN on PAC TV's Prime channel or at our website. We're also on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Now don't go anywhere as PCN Life is back with a brand new episode coming up. Enjoy.